Have you ever wondered how aircraft can land in the worst of conditions? Sometimes it seems like the pilots can't see anything all the way down to the ground. This is most likely thanks to the ILS. The ILS approach has revolutionized aviation and the types of weather we can fly in. In this video, we will cover everything you need to know about the ILS, including how it became the most reliable approach for pilots in aviation history. What is the ILS? An infographic showing an airplane landing, the runway, the glide slope, localizer array, and an airport tower. You might have heard pilots talking about the instrument landing systems, ILS. But what is it? The ILS is a type of approach pilots use to land. It is a precision approach aid based on two radio beams. These beams provide the pilots with lateral and vertical guidance. The approach starts at a certain distance and altitude from the airport. It aims to guide the aircraft to the ground. The standard approach angle of three degrees allows a stable profile to be flown. This means the pilots can slow and configure the aircraft for landing. Although we have reliable GPS for many approaches today, the ILS remains relevant. Ground-based navigation aids mean we don't have to rely on satellites. Decision height. You nominate a decision height DH for each approach. The DH is the height at which pilots must decide whether to continue the approach. The pilots will continue the approach at DH if they are visual with the approach lights. Different categories of ILS have different decision heights. How does the ILS work? We now know what an ILS is. But how does it work? The ILS contains multiple components, allowing pilots to land in the worst conditions. Let's review them. Localizer. The localizer, LOC, is a ground-based navigation aid that provides lateral guidance. The aerials are at the runway's departure end. They transmit two VHF radio beams. One beam transmits slightly to the left of the center line, the other slightly to the right. Where these beams intercept is the center line of the approach, meaning you are on the localizer. The aircraft gets the lateral tracking information through receivers. The information shows the aircraft's lateral deviation from the center line to the pilot. Glide slope. The glide slope, GS, provides us with vertical guidance. The aerials are in a position that provides a threshold crossing height of 50 feet. Like the localizer, the glide slope aerials also transmit two intercepting beams. One beam transmits slightly above the required vertical profile, while the other beam transmits slightly below. Where the beams intercept defines the correct glide slope profile. The aircraft receives glide slope information through receivers. The gauges in the aircraft show the pilot the relevant information to stay on profile. Approach lighting system. The ALS helps the pilot transition from instrument flying to visual flying. It consists of lights that start at the landing threshold and extend into the approach area. The pilots can continue the approach to land when they are visual with the ALS. Marker beacons these days. The ILS is generally paired with a DME. This helps the pilots verify the glide slope. It allows the pilots to compare their height at each DME distance to the promulgated chart. DME wasn't widely adopted when the ILS was first created. Hence why the pilots would use marker beacons. Each beacon relates to a specific position on the approach for pilots to cross-check. An audible tone or a visual light in the cockpit helps identify the position. There can be up to three marker beacons on an approach. Outer marker represents the final approach fix and or glide slope intercept. 
middle marker represents DH. Inner marker represents DH for a CAT2 ILS. There are three main categories of ILS. Which category the pilots use depends on the type of equipment the aircraft has. It also depends on the pilot's level of training. The higher the category of ILS, the lower the minimum required for the pilots to land. The three categories of ILS are CAT 1, 2, and 3. There are three subcategories of CAT 3 ILS, Alpha, Bravo, and Charlie. Below, I've put together a table to show you the relevant weather minimums for each category of ILS. All type of instrument approaches have charts. Let's take a look for an ILS approach chart. So, we know what an ILS approach is, but how do we fly one? It might sound like a lot, but once we break it down, step by step, it's a lot easier than you think. Before we can fly an ILS approach, we must know how to read an approach chart. We have the ILS approach for Lima Tango, Foxtrot, Oscar Runway, 06, for this example. Name of the approach, country and city name, briefing strip, plan view, profile view, landing minimums, margin identification information, make all briefing and setup for approach before start the approach, and configure the aircraft for landing. When approaching your decision height, be ready to transition to visual flying. If you are visual at the nominated DH, continue the approach to land. If you are still IMC, carry out the missed approach. If you want to learn more about how to do briefing and how to fly ILS approach, you can watch my other videos about that. Common errors. Once established on the approach, the ILS is easy to fly. However, a few errors can affect your approach. Let's review some of the common errors you may encounter. Knowing these will help you mitigate them when you fly an ILS. False glide slope. In mountainous areas, you may sometimes get a false glide slope reading. These readings tend to happen before you're on an approach greater than 10 nautical miles from the airport. An erroneous glide slope capture could cause you to get low on the approach for a certain distance. So make sure you remain vigilant. To mitigate these, continue to check the altitude advisories on your approach chart. Incorrect course. An incorrect course will mean you will not intercept the approach. In some advanced aircraft, you may get a master caution indicating that the wrong course has been set. Brief the approach with detail. Cross-check the course with the approach plate to ensure the correct course is set. Wrong frequency. Another common error is setting the wrong localizer frequency. It is urgent to identify this when tuning the localizer. Identifying the frequency verifies that you have set the correct frequency. It also verifies that the navigation aid is working as it should be. Poor instrument scan. A poor instrument scan may cause you to deviate from the localizer and glide slope. A deviation of more than half a scale will mean you must carry out a missed approach. Practicing a good scan on the approach will not only ensure you stay on the ILS, but also keep you stable. This is crucial for any instrument approach. The ILS approach has revolutionized the aviation industry. The introduction of the ILS means pilots are able to land in some of the worst conditions. Making aviation travel that much more reliable. Although the ILS has existed for a long time, it remains one of the most used approaches worldwide. This is for a good reason. Knowing how to fly one of these approaches will definitely enhance your flying skills. 
Don't forget to subscribe my channel and like the video.